if you're like me and have a GitHub account but don't really actively use it, you may have never got around to setting up 2FA. But recently, you probably got an email that is probably somewhere in the thousand long list of random spam emails and also started seeing this notification over on the GitHub website. As of October 6th, you will be required to have 2FA enabled. Whilst this notification might be new for me and probably new for you as well, this is not a new initiative on GitHub. This all started with raising the bar for software security. GitHub 2FA begins March 13th. But this is just starting on the GitHub side. There is another project under GitHub's banner, that being NPM. This really all started over on the NPM side back in 2021. First starting with enrolling all NPM publishers into enhanced login verification, which is effectively email to FA. So you log into your account, they send you a one-time password, you put the password in, and then you log in. It's effectively the same thing that Steam does and a bunch of other platforms do. It's generally not considered 2FA because a lot of people just use a single password. So if it's the same password as your email account, is not really a second factor there. The actual 2FA rollout started with requiring the top 100 NPM package maintainers to use 2FA. Over time, this got expanded out to the top 500, then a bigger group and a bigger group, so on and so forth, until everybody on NPM requires 2FA. These rollouts are a totally normal concept. It's to ensure that things are actually working before you apply it to every single user. It's a lot easier to roll back, you know, 500 users, 100 users, than 5 million users. NPM, whilst being incredibly important to the web development space and incredibly massive, it's still relatively niche compared to the sheer size of GitHub. So now that everything is tested on the NPM side, now we can shift over to doing everything on GitHub. It's not like 2FA is a new concept to NPM and GitHub. You've been able to opt into it for a very, very long time. But I'm part of that group that didn't do so. And it turns out that group is not just the majority, but only 16.5% of GitHub users and 6.44% of NPM users before the rollout were actually using 2FA. And GitHub is very aware that this is an obvious security hole in the software supply chain, saying GitHub is central to the software supply chain and securing software supply chain starts with the developer. Our 2FA initiative is part of a platform-wide effort to secure software development by improving account security. Developers' accounts are frequent targets for social engineering and account takeover. Protecting developers and consumers of the open source ecosystem from these types of attacks is the first and most critical step towards securing the supply chain. Things like having an account get taken over and that user goes and makes some malicious commits. Or maybe they impersonate some other user to get involved in some organization. Or maybe they start leaking some private code. All of these things have happened multiple times in the past. Whilst GitHub having 2FA is certainly not new, what is new is they've been reworking and improving upon the system just to make it a better experience. So now you have the option of using an authenticator app, SMS, security keys, or web auth with GitHub Mobile. Now, SMS is generally not recommended. And if you do really care about your security, it shouldn't be used. If someone somehow gets access to your SIM card or clones your number, they just have access to your 2FA. This might not be a concern for most people, so it is still there for your convenience. Also keep in mind that SMS 2FA is not going to be available in every single country. There is a full list on their documentation. You probably will find your country here, but there is certainly a lot of them missing. The really annoying part about 2FA is when you don't have access to the device you need to actually do the 2FA. So what you can do now is enroll in multiple forms of 2FA. So you can make use of security keys and also an authenticator app. This is really nice to have because if for whatever reason you lose access to one of those forms, you can still get into the account. And you can mix and match however you want. So if you want to, you can use SMS and an authenticator app but it's not really recommended. You should probably go with some of the other options. Also, last month they did introduce passwordless login, which can be used as an alternative to using 2FA. Basically, it just skips the step of entering a username and password, and instead you're just using your physical device, which in this case being your phone, to actually authenticate that you're the owner of that account. 
Now, there are certain cases where your account is basically bricked and you have to go and make a new one. Now, previously, you wouldn't be able to use the same email address, so all of the commits that were attached to that email now don't line up anymore. So now, as a recovery step, you can unlink your email address from the account and use that same email to make a new account. Hopefully, you never have to do this, but if you lose a device that has your 2FA on it, there's not really much you can do. Now, I am in the very final group being required to enable 2FA. It's very possible you saw this notification a month ago, two months ago, or maybe when everything just first began. But why would that be the case? Well, they're also doing this in a phased rollout. If you're a user who created a GitHub or OAuth app or package, if you're a user who created a release, who are enterprise or organization administrators, if you're a user who contributed code to repositories deemed critical by NPM, OpenSSF, PyPy, or RubyGems, or you're a user who contributed code to the approximate top 4 million public and private repositories, and any combination of this, along with additional factors that GitHub are not making public. But basically, if you're more important to the GitHub ecosystem, you're required to do it earlier. If you're like me, and maybe you submit some issues here and there, maybe you have a couple of private repos and a couple of public repos that nobody really uses, in that case, well, you can just wait till the end. It's not really a big deal if you don't have 2FA set up right now. Also, if you had a repo that maybe wasn't that popular, but then all of a sudden just blew up, in that case, you may have been moved further ahead in the schedule as well. So, once you're in the group, or in this case, in the final group, here's how the rollout actually looks. 45 days before, you'll be given regular in-product reminders. These are your notifications you see in the actual GitHub website. And also, occasional email reminders. Email reminders that if you're anything like me, you probably don't see, because you have a ton of spam emails, and you just delete the wall of emails, and maybe check things like a week after they get sent to you. After that, on the 2FA deadline, you'll be prompted once per day, up to a week, to get 2FA set up. If after 7 days you don't have 2FA enabled, then your account is going to be limited. Now, this countdown is only going to start once you log into your account. So if you're maybe on vacation and you forget to set up 2FA, and realize, wait, it's like two weeks past the deadline, it doesn't really matter. It only starts when you log back into GitHub again. Then 28 days after you've set up 2FA, so if you set it up on the first day, if you set it up on the seventh day, it's 28 days after that point, they will then validate the 2FA is actually working. Even if your account is currently logged in, you'll be prompted to use the 2FA. If it's not working, you have the opportunity to go and reset everything. Now, if your account is logged out at that point, that's when you're going to see some trouble. When we say your account is going to be limited, what exactly do we mean? Well, the specifics are not defined, but there are things saying blocked from accessing GitHub features. So the way that I interpret that is you'll still be able to browse the website. You can be logged into your account, but you won't be able to do things like make a new repo, whether that's private or public, make issues, make merge requests, pretty much anything that makes GitHub a useful website. So be sure to get your 2FA set up. And yes, I am going to go and do so as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you already have 2FA set up? Were you part of that 16.5%? Or maybe you didn't realize that 2FA was even an option. I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become a one over, these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear, pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and watch me forget to set up 2FA.